Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And together as a couple, we rank all the Marvel movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That way you get the guy's perspective and the girl's perspective and, you know, the nerdy perspective, too. Because we are both definitely nerds. Which is why we'll continue ranking movies even beyond the Marvel Cinematic Universe yep. to include Harry Potter's, Batman's, Lord of the Rings, uh, what else? Star we Wars, Jurassic Indiana Parks. Jones, Jurassic Park. I mean, we're, we're going to try to cover it all. There's definitely... A lot of material out there that we're going to cover in TV shows as well. So we've developed... So when we rank in these films, we started to think, how can we do this in like the dorkiest way possible? And so Bethany assigned us homework and made a score sheet. It's true. And now we fill out the score sheet, and then based on the scores, that's how we rank the films. So it's scientific, even if it's completely arbitrary. Yeah, we actually did rank these films just off the top of our head on a drive home one night. Yeah. And then decided but that's not that, fun. That's like a five-second video. <laughs> yeah, that we would make it even dorkier. So this is what we've done. So now on to our review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So our first category is lead male and lead female likability. So our lead male in this one is, of course, Star-Lord, mm -hmm. also known as Peter Quill. And our lead female is Gamora. Also known as Gamora. Exactly. Uh, so for Peter Quill, I give him a score of three. He's a badass. Mm -hmm. That's... That's pretty much undeniable in this one. Um, for Gamora... I, I deny it. I deny the badass status. Ooh. I gave Peter Quill a two. He Did dropped. He, down he dropped. Yeah, he was in my group of friends before, wow. but he's dropped in this one. He's in more personal issues, and he kind of doesn't get that fun, that fun vibe that he's had in the first one. He's a little bit more serious in this one, which isn't a bad thing, but I just didn't like him as much. So that's why I'd grab a beer with him, you know, just to cheer him up. I mean, he's a celestial, and he did take down a god like person so I, I still argue that he deserves badass status um, it's a good actually, argument it's a good argument which actually brings him up i believe in my rankings it does Peter Quill. it did uh so there's that for gamora i give her a score of four i definitely want this chick in my inner circle wow. of friends uh she's strong but unlike she was in the first guardians of the galaxy where she was super cold and distant and reserved and closed off and and unwilling to connect with people or to be vulnerable in this one she's as she basically says has found her family and we see that she is with them do or die until the end and she does definitely take risks on their behalf so i think she's grown in that element and for that reason i gave her a four i gave gamora a two as Whoa, well what I, I gave them both a two I, I grab a beer with them but in this one i didn't find them uh maybe as as, as badass or, you know. That's why I, I probably, my scores are probably wrong. I'm gonna admit that right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm that gonna I, say that they are. Next up is our hero bangability category. All right, we meet, rate the male and the female. So for this one, I gave Peter Quill a zero. Again, he gets a zero from me, unfortunately. And for Gamora, she stays the same. I gave Gamora a two. For me, I gave Gamora a score of zero. For Peter Quill, I gave him a score of two, which is, you know, he has a hot face, hot body, what else do you need? Our next one is lead male and lead female relatability. I gave them both a score of one. Um, and a one is, I know some people like that, but I wouldn't exactly call them friends. For me, I gave Gamora a zero. Uh, same as last time, I didn't relate to her. But for Peter Quill, he got the highest score I've ever given a character in relatability, a four. It's like as they were looking in my soul at this character. Ego was his father, but really Yandu is his, or dad. Was his daddy. Was his daddy, who like raised him and, and taught him everything. Since my, my dad had, had uh, some health issues and was a little bit older, my older brothers kind of took over that role of the, the father figure. And, um, you know, my brother Joe taught me how to ride a bike. My brother Dan took me to the Boy Scout uh, trips. My brother Dave coached basketball. My brother Bill gave like the sage advice and he was, the, he does the best Donald Duck impression I've <laughs> ever seen. So he was like the goofy dad. And then uh, I have six brothers, so. My other brothers were a little bit closer in age, so they were kind of add more of the, the brother dynamic. There's a lot of family involved in this, and the talk of family, and choosing your family, and you know your, your family having your back for you, and your family maybe not being orthodox, um, the, you know, the typical type of family. Uh, so I think that's kind of how I grew up a little bit. Um, you know, I had a typical family where you know, I had a mom and a dad, and you know, had a family and everything like that, but the roles weren't always like, defined like a normal, like you know, a regular family, a normal family. So that's why I gave it a four. Let's move on to our villain category. Mm -hmm. And our first question is, what is our villain's end goal? How many people does it affect? So, of course, Ego is our villain. Yeah, he wants to make uh, all the worlds him. He wants to turn every world into him. Which affects a now lot Now you know what Peter people. Quill gets his, gets his arrogance a little bit, all right? Can you blame the guy? 
Okay, so yeah, it's hereditary. So, so what'd you give it? I'm very curious. Five. The oh my gosh! Universe. She gave it a five. I mean, he he lays out his plan, and it's it's everywhere, every planet, everything, every. There it is. Take that, Thanos. She usually said that five was reserved for Thanos. That was the I, only person who was going to get a five. I really thought it was. And I totally had forgotten about ego. Yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, I give it a five as well, So for the, for the exact same reasons. How strong is a villain compared to the hero? Well, he's a celestial. He's pretty much a god. So, he's a lot stronger than, than the heroes. I gave him a four. Even if Peter Quill's a half god, a, a full god beats a half god. So, I give him a four. Yeah, I mean, go back to Greek mythology. Demigod? will never, ever kick Zeus's butt. Full gods win every time, so. Nerd logic. Love Nerd it. logic, yes. <laughs> she um, goes back to Greek mythology. Oh, I love I'm it. a super dork. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I also gave it a four. So that brings us to, do you care about the villain? I said I hate him. I gave him a three as well, and what really drove me to hate him is when he said that he put the cancer in Peter Quill's mom's brain. So our next category is villain bang ability. Uh. So Drax talked about, you know, how Eagle's got a penis, because he, you know... He had to have sex with Peter, Peter Quill's mom. And according to Ego, it's not half bad. <laughs> yeah, so does that make me want to bang him? No, the guy's repulsive. I mean, he's a zero. And, I mean, this isn't knocking Kurt Russell, who's an attractive oh, guy, yeah. uh, but his character is just so despicable. Like, I'm sorry, dude, no. not with a 10-foot pole are you getting near me. Next up are side, side characters. characters. Rocket, Drax, Baby Groot. Hmm. Different than Groot, Baby Groot. Uh, we have Yondu. We have Nebula. We have Princess Aisha. The gold, gold chick. <laughs> we have Kraglin. Uh, he's Yandu's kind of right-hand man. We have Taserface and the Ravagers. Uh, and we have Mantis. Yes. I did have quite a few ones. Kraglin. Okay. Taserface and the Ravagers. Mm -hmm. Mantis. Mm -hmm. And Aisha. Which, for one, that means I thought these characters were there for the plot. The plot has some holes if you take them out of the film. I have the exact same ones. All my ones were the same. I thought they were just there for the plot. For my twos, I gave it to Nebula and I gave it to Drax. I think Nebula helps Gamora be more likable and relatable, uh, their whole dynamic. And with Drax, uh, I thought that, Dra I love Drax as parts of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I thought they pushed the humor too much with Drax mm -hmm. in this one, which has kind of been a theme with, with the Marvels is when they find something that works, sometimes they push it a little bit too much in the sequel. They did it with Darcy. They did it with the second Avengers. We have one in common, which yeah. is Nebula. All right. Um, and for all the reasons that you said, I, I mean, I think she is entirely there to humanize Gamora for us and also to show us a little bit of Gamora's vulnerability. My other two, and I have a feeling you're really going to be upset with this one. I think I know where this is going. Is Yondu. <sighs> yep. His journey was so linked with Quills. I think if it weren't for Yondu, I might actually start to really dislike Peter Quill in this movie. Yondu really brings out that side of him that kind of reminds him who he is. I gave Yondu a four. Uh, I thought Yandu was essential to this to this film. Yandu has his own journey and he has his own story of redemption in here. And he's got to, you know, with the Ravagers, the fact that he sold these children to Ego and then Ego slaughtered them. Kind of like with Black Widow, he's got red in his ledger. And he's got to do the right thing. And, um, you know, he, he makes the sacrifice in the end uh, to, to save Peter Quill's life. And so I thought that, you know, without Peter Quill, the Guardians of the can't go on. So Yandu was essential to this one. That's why I gave him all four. I like that you said the red in the ledger. But you yeah. brought it back to that. I like that. Drax got my three, um, okay. which is he's there for the humor. I I do see what you're saying. I do think that they they pushed it a little bit, and it it did really dance with that line of being too much and borderline annoying. But I felt like it stayed on the right side of it. And my four was Rocket. He's the heart and soul of the team, yeah. no question. He's got so much empathy within him that he finds connection with Yondu in a way that I don't think any other character has found. Even Peter mm -hmm. Quill has struggled to find that with Yondu. He's also making the tough decisions. Plus he's an animal, so I just have to love him the best. Yeah. Um, he definitely gets my four. This movie would be barely watchable without him, and, and yeah. I agree with that on all fronts. And uh, that, I gave Rocket a four as well. We talked about how funny Rocket is and how essential to the heart he is. So why didn't he get the MCS? I mean, who, who could have gotten the MCS? Baby Groot! Baby Groot! <laughs> I mean, of course. Baby Groot, God, from, from the moment he comes on in the opening sequence with his dancing yep. and his fighting the little lizards and... I think that sequence got, you know, at least maybe a quarter or maybe a third of the laughs from, yeah. for, for this movie for me. Oh my God, he's so funny and he's so adorable. You're, yeah. you're instantly in love with him. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like, as the movie goes on, 
he's a brave little guy. Yeah. I mean, he's so tiny and he's so young, but he is so fierce when he wants to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he brings so much heart. He I does. mean, he holds you the, as the audience in the palm of his hand and manipulates you to laugh or cry at, like, a moment's notice. Next up is plot. Now, for plot, I'm actually going to let you go first because I think mine's going to shock you. I, I gave plot a four. Um, I said that I wouldn't look down on popcorn or get up to go to the bathroom. Like, this... You're in All it. All right. I gave plot a zero. Plot's just not that engaging. And we don't really know what Ego's up to until the, the final end of it. Sometimes when you don't know what the villain is up to, I think it's, it's, it can be really interesting, like within Captain America Civil War. But in that one, we still had the Sokovia Accords, and we had Captain America and Iron Man fighting over that, and then in the background, Zemo was doing his thing. The reason I like this movie so much is because I like the characters. It's a, it's a character piece. We care about these characters, so when they're involved in these emotional moments and going on this emotional journey, we're invested in it, even if what's going on around them maybe isn't that interesting. I do still think there was an engaging plot, but I think that you, you bring up some valuable points that, yeah, I mean... Oh, thanks. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so I bring up some valuable points, whereas before it's like, every point you bring up just has no value. But this time, you bring up some valuable points. Thanks. You're welcome. We're going to go to female empowerment. So what role do women play in this movie? I gave them a three. Okay. I said, without a strong move from a hero, from a female... Uh, victory would not have happened. I just never had a sense that take the women out and there is no victory. Yeah, see that and that's that's why I gave it a two. I thought you were I thought I was gonna get trash for giving it a two as well. I was like, oh, oh well, here's Bethany you're gonna come at me for giving it a two. No. Um I said there's moments where girl kicks where a girl kicks ass and you know obviously Nebula kicks ass and Gamora and Princess Aisha. We just listed they're very strong female characters in this one, but I didn't think they were essential to the victory. Um Really, the, it's, it's Baby Groot, and it's Peter Quill, and it's Rocket. And it's Yondu. And it's Yondu. Those are the people that kind of bring the victory about. Next up is soundtrack. I gave it a four. I said, I'm going to go out and buy that soundtrack. When the Fleetwood Mac song came up in the end, when he's fighting Ego, that got me so pumped up. And I just, it, it was great. I also gave it a four. Humor. There, yeah. there was a lot of humor in this movie. There was. Um, I mean, we were both of us laughing out loud mm -hmm. so frequently um, that my humor score was a 40. Uh, mine was a 50, which was less than the, the first Guardians of the Galaxy one. Still a very funny film, and so 50 yeah. is a very, very good score. Next up are visual effects. Uh, I thought the visual effects in this one were even better than the first Guardians of the Galaxy. I gave it a 4, so my eyes had a few eyegasms from this one. Yandu's arrow, when he's going through and killing everyone on that Ravager ship, yeah. When the music's going on, is one of the coolest scenes. I mean, that that was that alone got a four for the whole movie. I mean, but the rest of the movie was very visually appealing. Yeah, I also gave it a four. Um, I think obviously this is a, a film that relies very heavily on CGI mm -hmm. and green screen and special effects. Um, and never for a moment did I think to myself, "Oh, CGI." I never, I never even thought about it, apart from thinking about how amazing everything looked. So next up, since we've just discussed visual effects, mm -hmm. we are going to talk about action sequences, because these two are often very closely related when it comes to, if the action's not good, we probably aren't necessarily buying the visual and vice versa. Now, with everything Bethany just said, I'm going to go ahead and give this a two. A two is there are one or two fun sequences in, the, in there. My total score for action scenes was a ten. I gave action uh, a score of four, which means four times five is 20. Guardians of the Galaxy has more of a Star Wars-esque flair about it. I think the only reason that I could give it the same score that I gave Captain America Winter Soldier was because they were so different. Okay, they were yeah. like a totally different genre of action sequences sure. where I could go like, in this world, this genre of action, I think it's at its peak. Moving on to dialogue. Uh, so the dialogue in this film I thought was really good. I gave it a three. I said it was sharp, it was clever, it was witty. I gave it a four. <laughs> um, while again, it's not a movie that you're probably going to quote outside of the context of this film, I do think within the world of this film it's a highly quotable movie and I think they did a good job writing for the individual characters in it. So next up then is Love Story, which, you know, if you've seen this film you're probably thinking, Oh, Gamora and Peter Quill. I mean, it was, it was okay. Yeah. And you'd be right if that was our love story. It That's would be kind of meh. It's not our love story, people. That's right. It's not. Because it is undeniable that the overriding love story in this film is Peter Quill and his daddy. Yeah. Which is Yondu. Um, there was just... That's Peter Quill's whole journey. That journey helps him grow up. And the journey that Yondu has of kind of coming to terms with the fact that he has always 
loved and protected and raised Peter. I give it a four. I said if they ever break up, I'm gonna be sad. And you know, at the end of this, I'm definitely, I'm definitely getting misty eyed and tearing up. Well, I give it a four because it says if if they ever break up, there's gonna be some ugly crying and a nasty letter to Marvel. And at the end of this, I was crying <laughs> and reaching for the Kleenex box. So yeah. yes, they definitely earned a four and then yeah. some. Which brings us to heart. I didn't. Think it was gonna get a four, but then in the end, it it just delivered, and it got a four. Um, to me, the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise has the most heart of any of the franchises, and to be able to do that while also being arguably the funniest of the franchises, I think is pretty impressive. I mean, I'll admit it's the most I've cried at the end of a Marvel movie that we've watched so far. First Rocket, I mm -hmm. mean his his I can't lose another friend today when you see how torn up he is when he makes a yeah. hard call that they have to get off the planet and leave Peter and Yondu behind um all of that starts getting you choked up and then Yondu dies and Peter's reaction response, oh god I mean it's it's perfect because Peter has finally found his father he finally has a parent again and that parent is ripped away from him almost instantly after he realizes it and he has to watch his dad die, just like he had to watch his mom die. Then the funeral. So of course you're crying at this moment. And you pull it together, <laughs> and they're going to send the body out into space, and you're like, okay, like wipe the tears away, you have your Kleenex, and you're pulling it together again. And then the Ravagers all come. Mm -hmm. And Yandu gets a Ravager funeral. My final score was 124 plus one for a fist bump moment. Um, and so that brings it to 125 for me. My score was 124, and then I gave it a plus one for a fist bump, and it was when Peter Quill is talking to uh, Ego, and he goes, you know, you shouldn't have killed my mom and, you know, destroyed my Walkman. And then the, the song comes on. Yeah, yeah, that was it. And he's, he breaks free, and he's about to kick, <laughs> kick Ego's ass. Yeah, and that was 100% the same moment I had. It yeah. was, I was trying to think of what the line was, and it was, you shouldn't have destroyed my Walkman. <laughs> yeah. It was just like... Boom! Get him, Peter! But... Yeah. It lost some points. We gave it minus five points, kind of for just some corny cheesiness. They might have been doing it as a way to be you know, funny and making fun of themselves. and making. But one, I don't like that. I like the fact that they are able to give heart and then break it up with some jokes. That's fine. But don't make fun of yourself for being emotional right. in this film. Yeah. And some of the cheesy parts were one, uh, Peter is playing catch with his dad with like the ball of light. Uh, that was really corny. And then um, Yandu telling Rocket, "Cause you're me." I don't know. I thought that was a little ho hokey. That line didn't bother me as much as the ball catching with like the slow motion, yeah, and the yeah. sappy music. That brings the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two score for us at 120. Because we actually had the exact same score. The exact same First score. First time ever. So if you like what you saw, go ahead and give us a thumbs up on the video and uh, consider subscribing to our channel so you can check out all our reviews. We want to discuss this with you. So yeah. that's why we put our scoring sheet down in the description below this video. And you can download it or you can fill it out online. That's probably the better way to do it. Um, and submit your scores and uh, post it down in the comments below. Smart highbrow people hash out politics and literature and we hash out Marvel films. So by all means, if you like doing that too, Definitely let us know what your score yeah. would be or pop a question to us like, you know, yeah, for sure. why did you choose to give Gamora this? I really feel X, Y, and Z about her character that maybe we Of course she goes to the Gamora thing trying to trash me, trying to, say, trying to turn everyone against me down in the comments. That's alright. That's fine. I'm just I, saying. I can handle it. A higher score. I can handle it. Rewatch these films with us and go in the comments below and post your score or your review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Our score was 120 but that is definitely not definitive.